and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about detour proofs and midpoints. Okay, detour proofs are proofs in which we're going to prove a triangle congruent, but first we have to prove another triangle congruent. So we're going to take a little detour as part of the process of proving the second triangle congruent. So again, proofs, detour proofs are proofs in which the congruence of one triangle is contingent or dependent upon the proof of the congruence of another triangle. That means we need to prove, i.e. means meaning, you'll need to prove the first pair of triangles congruent before showing that the second pair is congruent. So here we have a problem. We have a, uh, a kite figure with a bunch of triangles in it. And we're given the diagram as shown. And now we're trying to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to ADE. Okay, so we want to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE. Well, how are we going to take care of that? So what I tell my students first is to mark up the diagram and figure out what you're going to do first before you go ahead and tackle the problem. All right, so let's think about uh, how we're going to tackle the problem before we write the proof. So we're going to back up here. I'm trying to two, prove those two triangles congruent. I have AB congruent to AD. I have BC congruent to DC. Now I can also say that AC is congruent to itself. So now I have two triangles, ABC and ADC, that are congruent by side, side, side. If I know that those two triangles are congruent, I can say that angle BAE is going to be congruent to DAE. So I have I've proven that these two triangles are congruent, uh, BAC and DAC. So by CPCTC, I can say that DAE and BAE are going to be congruent angles. I also know that AE is congruent to itself. So now I can say that <clears throat> BAE is congruent to DAE by side, angle, and side. So the first thing I had to do was I had to prove that ABC, triangle ABC, was congruent to triangle ADC. And then from there, I was able to get by CPCTC that the two angles BAE and DAE were congruent. And from there, I was able to establish that AE was congruent to itself. And from there, I have two triangles congruent by side, angle, side. All right, so the proof goes as follows. AB is congruent to AD, that's given. BC is congruent to CD, that's given. And AC is congruent to AC. Um, that's not given, but that's the reflexive property. Now I have the two triangles ABC and ADC that are congruent by side, side, side. And notice I reference the individual statements and reasons. And I can say that angle BAE is congruent to DAE by CPCTC. I state that AE is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And now I'm going to say that triangle ABE is congruent to ADE by side, angle, side. So again, detour proofs are just proofs in which I first prove one triangle or a pair of triangles congruent, and then use the uh, corresponding parts of those congruent triangles to prove another pair of triangles congruent. All right, let's talk about midpoints. So we talked about detour proofs, now let's talk about midpoints. Midpoint on a coordinate plane is just the halfway point between two points. So if I were to say that A is one point, x1, y1, and B is another point, x2, y2, then the midpoint, which we'll call M, of the segment A to B can be found by using the midpoint formula, which is just the average of the two values. So x1 plus x2, so the x values from A and B, over 2, and then the y values, the average of the y values, y1 plus y2 over 2. So if I wanted to find the midpoint of 3, 7, and 5, 9, I'd say m is equal to 3 plus 5 over 2, and 9 plus 7 over 2, which is the same as 4, 8. If I wanted to find the midpoint of 4, negative 2, and negative 6, negative 10, it would be 4, so the midpoint is equal to 4 minus 6 over 2, and negative 2 minus 10 over 2, which is equal to 
negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1, and negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. So that's how you find the midpoint. Now, it's important to know what the midpoint formula is because there are going to be times when you're asked um, not directly to find the midpoint, but to find uh, perhaps a, an equation for a line that represents the median. So in this case, we're going to find the coordinates of the median to AC. Uh, and then we're going to find the equation of the line that runs through the vertex B and the median to AC. So uh, first we need to find the midpoint uh, to, or to segment, uh, or the midpoint of segment AC. So we use the midpoint formula. It's going to be, uh, midpoint will be equal to negative 6 minus, or plus 2 over 2, and negative 2, so I'm taking the Y values from the respective coordinates, negative 2 plus 4 over 2. And that gives me a negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2 for my x value, and then plus 2 over 2, which is equal to 1 for my y value. So I know that the uh, midpoint of AC is going to be negative 2, 1. Now I need to find the equation of the line that runs through the midpoint of AC, and we'll just call that point M and the vertex B. Uh, and so I'm going to use the uh, point slope form and I will figure out the slope first. So in the point slope form, if you don't remember it from algebra, y minus y1, uh, so I have a point and a slope is equal to the slope m times x minus x1. So we have two points, we can use either one of those for x1 and y1, we need to find the slope. So the slope is going to be negative 4 minus 1 over, so the difference between B and M, negative 4 minus 1 over 6 minus and minus 2. 6 minus and minus 2, which is the same as 6 plus 2. So this will end up being minus 5 over 8. So my slope is negative 5 over 8. So then I rewrite the point slope form, inserting values that I've uh, got from either one of these two points and the slope. So let's take the point M to insert our values for the point, and I have Y minus 1 is equal to m, the slope, times x minus a minus 2, which is plus 2. So I end up with y is equal to negative 5 eighths x plus, oh, excuse me, minus 10 fifths, or 10 eighths, excuse me. So negative 5 eighths times 2 is uh, negative 10 eighths, plus 1, as I had 1 from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation. And I end up with y is equal to negative 5 eighths x uh, plus, I'm sorry, minus 1 fourth. So let me rewrite that. So again, this is how you might use the midpoint formula. Remember, it's just the average of the two values for x, average of the two values for y. You can use that information to find out the midpoint um, and then to draw and to find the equation for a line that represents the median to that point.